Learn the most efficient way to learn the map layouts. If you have ever found yourself lost in a quick match, unranked or even ranked, this video will help you out. If you have any question, I stream every weekend on Twitch. Link can be found in the comment section. Also, feel free to ask questions down below. This was the most efficient way for me to coach the new players on how to learn the maps. So, this is mostly speaking about the actual experience. Without any further ado, let's get going. First and foremost, the best game mode to learn the map is to play T-Hunt on Disarm the Bomb. Click the settings icon, options, and in the general tab, find the matchmaking preference. What we will do now will only affect T-Hunt and not any other online game mode. Having this in mind, find training grounds and turn off the elimination and both hostages. Now in the section below, find the map that you would like to learn and for our video, we will go for the border. We will turn every map off aside from the border. Again, this means you will be playing T-Hunt only on disarm bombs on border. If you start a queue on a quick play unranked or ranked, you might be playing on any game mode and any map. When you get this, click the menu icon then training grounds and then with the difficulty on normal go to the lone wolf. So, when we get all the basics settled, it is strongly recommended to have an operator with a shotgun. Buck will come handy as his main ability is actually a shotgun that opens up the walls. Sledge, the hammer guy, can also bring the shotgun as primary. Now the question is, why this game mode and why the shotgun? Because in this game mode you have unlimited time to explore the map and you can also replenish your ammunition. With the unlimited time and the unlimited shotgun ammo you will be able to open up the whole map, if it is possible. However, my first advice is not to try to learn the vertical angles. These are more advanced and when you are new you want to learn fundamentals and grow upon them. Also before methods, do not learn all the 12 unranked maps in a week or two. I will recommend you to get familiar with 3 maps per a week maximum. Also unranked maps are maps that are shown in the video right now. Ok, so let's use sledge for this as most of the new people won't be able to afford buck just yet. First, clear out the whole building of the terrorists. There should be up to 22 bots to kill. You can check how many kills you have by pressing tab. But do not plan the diffuser. We are not playing this to win. When the map is cleared, find the staircases, preferably by the corner. And from there you will start exploring the map. Try to go with as many straight paths as possible. Use your sledgehammer or a shotgun to open up the saw walls if necessary. The moment you enter the room next, explore it and move to the next room, that is still in that straight line. Also there is a compass in the bottom, next to it there is a room name, so you might want to use it. However, once you get into the game, you will see how at least 20-30% to of the room names are bad and not used at all. We have hit the corner and as the room called supply doesn't have many doors, Let's go back to the path we just went. Try to get back to the starting point by the staircase. Now you want to repeat the same process but for the other direction. Follow a line and explore the new room without going somewhere in the middle. And go back. Now you can pick any of the two new corners and start doing the same thing. Let's go to the corner we have been previously. In the room ahead we can see central stairs, people usually call it main stairs. And we can see that this room is actually a bit different shaped. But you gotta remember to always go straight. The reason why we won't explore this room and we have explored the previous one is because the room has multiple doors or paths for the other new room. For instance, it has this door, and by the bottom of the main stairs, it has this double door. 
We want to keep a straight line as possible because that's how our brain will remember things easier. When it is in a right shape and not an irregular shape. So, with having this in mind, we'll hit this corner. Then again, try to come back to the starting point, which was this corner. When you do that, we'll go back to the new corner. You can also see that we are here using the technique to repeat a path immediately after we cross it, which is really important for the long term memory. We will explore this room and continue going straight, again ignoring this door. We want to keep going in straight lines. We will end up in the fourth corner and we can already see the room that we have started. However, let's first go back to the previous corner for the long term memory and then go back to the very starting point. Now try to go around the whole floor, with first going towards this side. When you do that, start exploring the irregular rooms, which in this case is just one. This will take your 5 to 6 minutes of the time to learn one floor. We have used a bit more because I had to explain you in detail on what to do. Now, if you remember, we started from the staircases and there was another staircase, the main stairs. That's good info to know how many staircases are on the map, or on the floor, because these will be your rotation points in the actual matches. Now, we will do the same thing but on the second floor. The reason we won't start on this hall is because it has too many new entry points, so we will go outside and break this hall. And we will do the same pattern. I will go through this wall, and a straight line all the way to this corner while exploring the rooms. If you see a small room, feel free to explore it as well. Now, I will go back to the starting point and start from the another direction. Don't forget to open up the barricade just so you can see what's up there. When we have hit the corner, we'll go back and I'll pick any of the two directions we already did. The moment we get to a known position, it is time to see the irregular rooms. The first one is by this hall, and we can see that it directs us to the main stairs. And another room, if we remember, was just by our starting point. This one is called Fontaine. Don't forget to use your sledgehammer to open up the wall so you can get the feeling of it. But the most important thing in studying the map is the layout. Anything after it is just more advanced. What I didn't tell you just yet is that there is a beautiful website. I will leave it in the comment section from the top down perspective of every map in the siege. This can help you a lot anytime. Some maps are not regularly shaped, so expect them to have more than just 4 corners. But just repeat the same thing as we did in this map. Speaking about the outside info, don't waste too much of your time watching the videos that are walkthroughing you around the map. You need yourself to get in the building and feel it. It is very important for both short and long term memory. You can do it if you're not on your PC. And Ubisoft actually has a very good video series on it. I will again leave it in the comment section. But the moment you are on the PC and you are willing to deliver a map, do it in custom. Let me know if you have any question. And as I said, if you do, I am streaming every weekend on Twitch. Link can be found in the comment section. This was the second episode of the Siege Academy. Previously, we have talked about getting familiar with the Siege and should or should you not buy it. In the next episode, we'll be talking about the operators, so stay tuned for that one. Thank you for watching this video and staying with me for this long, and thanks all the patrons and YouTube members for making this video available. If you want to learn all the basics and advanced things about the siege, make sure to give me a like, subscribe and click the notification bell to get all notifications from my channel. Make sure to give me feedback down in the comment section below.